aboard the Cape May Well Watcher or the Water Lily, part of the Cape May Well Watcher fleet. I'm Captain Jeff. Back behind me there, six feet, that's Captain Jeff, Captain Jeff Stewart, the owner of the company. And we are out for another virtual well watch today. I am your quarantine captain. Welcome aboard. We have been out in Delaware Bay. We are chasing a whale report that was supposed to be pretty recent. We got out here, it turns out it was about two hours old by the time we got here. Now I know some of you watching have been aboard for our whale watches. And that's how some of our reports go, right? We get a report, we get out there, we look at where we were, we look at where it was, and then we have to choose a direction on where to go. But well, we did all that, and we have been unsuccessful. It happens, right? Part of whale watching. Unlike uh, some of my fishing buddies who are watching this right now, Captain Mike, we don't always get them. It's part of the job. Especially when you consider we went to where a whale was two hours ago. These whales, they can swim at a minimum of five knots. Two hours, they're 10 miles from you. And we chose a direction. It turned out we were going the wrong direction. So we are bringing you in now out of the middle of Delaware Bay onto Cape May Point. And we're going to see if we can find you some dolphins. And we'll go from there. All right. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the cruise. idea where we are here. We are coming in from out in the middle of Delaware Bay on to Cape May Point. We had passed some dolphins on our way out and hopefully we'll get back on them here bringing in towards Cape May Lighthouse and the point. We've got one of the Cape May Lewis ferries on its way in. miles out in the bay, out towards Brandywine Shoal earlier. We've been looking around for over an hour now, and our conditions are kind of going downhill. That's why we wanted to get you out here this morning, because we got some weather coming in overnight here. We are cruising on Delaware Bay. in the direction of the ferry there and take you up the bay, headed north up the bay, eventually we'd wind up in the Delaware River. And we could have you in Philadelphia in about 80 miles. Working our way towards the point. We've got the concrete ship off to our left by Sunset Beach. And we're bringing it on the point here, heading for the rips. by small sand dunes on the ocean floor beneath us. Cause the moving waters to shoot up vertically towards the surface, causing the lines and the waves to appear. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Oh, we feel like we're in a little less boat than usual here. Oh yeah. Got an 
a little bit of wind we got, makes it a little choppy. Now at the southernmost tip of the state of New Jersey, any further south, you will get wet. 10 miles out back behind us, Lewis, Delaware. On your left, you can see the famous Cape May Lighthouse. It's the third lighthouse to be built here. The first two, they were lost to the sea. Third present day lighthouse constructed. It is 157 and a half feet tall, 199 steps up to the top, where it houses a 350,000 candle power light, visible at sea, 19 miles on a clear night. MAC, the Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts and Humanities, now known as Cape May MAC, has received over $2 million in grant money to restore the lighthouse to its original sandstone color and do massive renovations to the lantern section and the oil house for a small donation. Too bad, you can make the climb up to the top for a beautiful panoramic view of Cape May Point and the surrounding waters. Also, we passed St. Mary's by the Sea, now a sister's summer retreat, home to the sisters of St. Joseph. It was built as the Shore Hotel back in 1890 by John Wanamaker and then sold to the sisters in 1909 with a small sum of $9,000. You got a hand to them. They know their real estate is one of the few places on the East Coast. So you can see the sun rise over the Atlantic Ocean and set over Delaware Bay. We have left Delaware Bay. We're now in the Atlantic Ocean. And I think we got some dolphins up ahead here. Also passing World War II gun emplacement and bunker. It originally housed two 155 millimeter seacoast artillery guns, and they had a 12 mile range. Yeah, we got dolphins up ahead. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh. Feeding going on up here, Captain Stewart says. Let's check it out. Coming to us, left side, up ahead. Nice group. Pretty nice group. There's Flipper. Just went down on our left side here. It was coming at us between 11 and 10 o'clock. On the surface again, left side. Got a lot of wind to deal with here, folks. It's uh, getting worse progressively throughout the day. Give him a chance, he'll be back up. Rule number one in whale and dolphin watching. Whatever goes down has got to come up. Not unlike the whale we were looking for earlier, it probably did come up just far from where we were looking. Got Cape May in the distance up ahead of us here. The city of Cape May is a very historic city dating back to the whaling days and beyond. It originally was a two-day journey down to Cape May from the then capital city of Philadelphia. First day down as far as May's Landing, and the second day down to Cape May by stagecoach. This group, I believe, crossed underneath of us here. Starting to surface right side up ahead. There's Flipper. Get back in focus here. Bottlenose dolphins, right side, back behind us here. They can grow to be seven to ten feet in length. They can weigh up to 
700 pounds is an average. They are gray in color, obviously, like everything else out here today. And you got two groups back here on the right. You got another group beyond this pod that's close to us on the right side here. Another pod inside of this pod. There's several groups here. Beautiful. Looking at us, right side. Every now and then you'll see the dolphins on the surface. You can see their eyes. Remember, they have excellent vision above and below the surface. You see their, their eyes are going on a people watch. They're watching you. Well, watching them. Now this area that we're in, the rips, it's an excellent fishing area. So what do you think the dolphins are doing down here today? They are feeding, they are chasing fish. They're out a little sushi for lunch. Dolphins are expert fishermen after all. They don't miss a trick. They live and hunt and work all within a cooperative community. They utilize cooperative hunting techniques to gather their fish. They eat 10 to 15 pounds of fish per day for dolphins. They communicate back and forth with each other through a series of whistles and clicks. around folks you see him point them out here captain jeff says we got some up to the left here another group should be servicing back behind oh. us when they were all on the surface together it's a pretty good sized pod here they might be working a little further out to the rips right side on the surface a whole line of them here So what are we looking at today, ladies and gentlemen? Dolphins or porpoise? What's the difference? I know a few folks that use the names back and forth interchangeably like they're the same and they're not. Today we are looking at bottlenose dolphins, not porpoise. See, dolphins have a beak, sits out the front of their body, makes them appear like they're always smiling, though they can't change that smile. And they have cone-shaped teeth. Porpoise, on the other hand, have a blunt head and spade-shaped teeth. In general, the dolphins are all larger than porpoise. Another general rule of thumb, how we can tell the difference here in Cape May, we go by the time of year it is. We see dolphins, we see porpoise, we see them in different seasons, though. See our dolphins, they usually show up here around the uh, middle of April. Been here for a couple of weeks now. They stay with us throughout the spring, summer, and the fall. Leave here around the middle of December. Typically, the dolphins do this because they like the water 50 degrees or warmer. My water temperature out here today, 48 degrees. Back behind us on the right, we got a couple on the surface here. And up ahead of us on the right. So they're a little spread out here today. Now porpoise on the other hand, we do see harbor porpoise, but we don't see them this time of year. If you came back out with us in January or February, you can see some harbor porpoise be out here in 38 degree water and there would not be any dolphins that time of year. Stand by. It is a little quieter up here. We'll take you to the bow deck here up on the Viking. The water lily. A little better 
sight lines from up here. Had a group just ahead of us here. Well, we got a group way up ahead of us on the right here that we're working up to. We've probably passed several here. Remember when they're down for a while, they're feeding. In this area, it's an excellent feeding area. What kind of fish you think the dolphins are chasing out here today? Well, we've got all kinds of fish here in Delaware Bay, right side up ahead. staple of their diet consists of Menhaden. We have a lot of bunker out here throughout the season. Bunker's a small oily fish around three to nine inches in length, silver in color, also known as Menhaden. A couple other names, Moss Bunker. But the dolphins are at the top of the food chain. They eat all kinds of stuff out here. They eat flounder, weak fish, bluefish, Small striped bass. You name it, it's on the menu for the dolphins. Right side. Nice group. Now, you know, even though the dolphins have excellent vision above and below the surface, they navigate using another sense, something we do not possess as humans. And that's echolocation or sonar. Is it's a sound pulse that the dolphins emit from the melon portion of their body. The sound travels through the water in front of the dolphin and when it bounces off of objects like the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of the boat, other dolphins or fish, the sound is sent back to the dolphin and sent it out and picked up by tiny receptors in the dolphin's lower jaw or chin. The receptors are their teeth. Their teeth, they are staggered into two distinct rows so they receive the sound signal back in stereo. This gives dolphins a 3D readout of what's in front of them all the time. Makes them perfectly suited for swimming in murky waters like we have here at the mouth of Delaware Bay or for hunting and feeding at night. here folks we are right off of Cape May Point currently that is Cape May in the background there hold on I'm up on the bow here and Cape May Lighthouse off to my left and we got a nice wind against the tide shaping up here wind keeps increasing while we're out so Spent about an hour and a half earlier looking for a whale, which was supposed to be a more recent report, and we were unsuccessful. There's, the dolphins are spread out up ahead of us here for the better part of 100 yards easily, that I can see from here.
large bot here, folks, coming at us. They're spread out over 100 yards out to our left. And Captain Stewart says even more up ahead of us coming this way. This term cetacean refers to a group of 90 different marine mammals, which are broken up into two suborders, toothed whales and baleen whales. Bottom of those dolphins, they are toothed whales. Hold on. They're grouped in with other toothed whales. That includes other dolphins, porpoise, orcas, pilot whales, belugas, all toothed whales. And larger whales like humpback whales, fin whales, right whales, blue whales. Those are baleen whales. And the baleen whales do not have teeth. In lieu of teeth, they have baleen plates in the roof of their mouth. They use the baleen like a big filter, taking in seawater and fish together and filtering them out with the baleen. Up ahead of us here, working up to that pod that I saw earlier. Nice group just off our bow here. There's Flipper. The largest whales we see here in New Jersey would be fin whales, so the second largest of the cetaceans. Second only to the blue whale. Have not had any reports of those this year. The report we had this morning was from the Cape May Lewis Ferry and then from a small survey boat of a whale in the area. And they reported seeing the whale's tail. So while I did not find that whale, the popular species that we see around here are humpback whales, and that's probably what was reported. Now, we've been getting reports basically throughout this entire quarantine period of whale activity in the bay, on and off. So fin whales can be up to 70 feet in length, humpback whales up to around 50 feet in length, up to 35 tons. Do we ever see sharks? Yes, we do see sharks. Lots of sharks. Not that we see, but there's lots of sharks that can be found in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean and lots right around Cape May even. Dolphins are up ahead of us here. We've probably got a couple pods gone back behind us. The dolphins, they're really not moving too far here. They are staying down for longer periods right now. And that's because we have this outgoing tide. They're actively feeding through this area, the rips. Got a lot of bait on our fish finders that we've seen basically from Brandywine Shoal all the way down here to the point. Several different groups going back and forth through here of the dolphins and they are feeding. So that's why they're staying down. Back behind us, right side, as we're on the surface here. See any seals? I have not seen any seals yet here, ladies and gentlemen, and I have been looking. Again, it's one of those things that we haven't been able to put in the normal time and effort that we would put in in a spring, as you can imagine. 
there's been a lot of seal activity. I know the Marine Mammal Stranding Center up there in Brigantine, New Jersey, they've had a lot of seal activity and they've responded to quite a few. Uh, their page is definitely worth checking out and a, a worthy cause if there's any way that you can help them out because they basically, for any marine mammal strandings, they're reporting for the entire state of New Jersey and even up into New York there. So it's, uh, they can always use the help. There's been a lot of different seals around this year, harp seals, gray seals, harbor seals. sea turtles. I have not seen any sea turtles yet. I don't think we have the conditions for it just yet. What kind of sharks would we see in the area? A common one that's a bottom feeder around here that we really don't see on the surface would be sand tigers. We've seen some duskies. We've seen uh, thrasher sharks on the surface. A little further out, you can see Makos sometimes. I, for a little while there, we were getting asked, have we seen Mary Lee, one of the tagged sharks with Osearch? I have never seen Mary Lee, so that would be awesome. The thing about sharks, folks, is they don't come to the surface that often. It's kind of a rarity to come across one on the surface. The dolphins all through here. We're working up to another pod up ahead on our left. The average lifespan of a dolphin, 25 to up to 50 years. Sorry, watching it work, huh? Again, if you're just tuning in, you are aboard the Water Lily with Captain Jeff Stewart. And he looks a little cold. <laughs> Something about absence of pilot house, no heat. Uh, smaller boat, all those things. Well, I do appreciate everybody who says that they've enjoyed the post here, ladies and gentlemen. We're hoping to return to whale watching very soon in a regular fashion, having the boat out. We have been preparing the boat for whale watching in this new era that we've entered here. One of the fortunate things, if you get to come down with us this summer, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know what the regulations are gonna be. We don't know what we have to change. Keep in mind though, ladies and gentlemen, we are the largest boats in the state of New Jersey. We have the most rail space. We have the highest capacity. We have two boats. So we will be able to get you out whale watching and we will be able to do it safely. We will follow whatever regulations are put out for us and we will keep the boats even more clean than they are on a regular basis. In the meantime, stay with us for these virtual whale watches. I am determined to get you out to a whale here. That's why we went even with the impending rain and as cold as it is and everything this morning. Same for Captain Stewart. He's determined to get you one as well. Dolphins are back behind us on the left here. We've told you an awful lot of information about dolphins in a short period of time. Don't expect you to remember everything about the dolphins, but if you can remember one fact, please remember this. Where are we? Well, you're all at home. Good, keep it up. 
we're out here in the Atlantic Ocean. We're out here in the dolphins' home. They're out here, they're in the wild, and they are free. Dolphins like this in the wild live 45 to 50 years out here. Now, the dolphins you see out in captivity, like in a marine mammal park show, they're not so lucky. Typically, for every one dolphin you see out in captivity, there's been three dolphins captured. The first two die in the first 90 days of capture, and the last one, lucky dolphin. You get to see in the show, they only live to the ripe old age of around five, and that's it. So what are we getting at? It doesn't matter whether they're on this boat or somebody else's. What really matters, the well-being of the dolphins. This is where they belong, living out their lives the way the Creator intended them to live, not swimming around in little concrete tanks and endless circles where they go blind from swimming in chlorinated water and die off from some other eye-related disease. No way, gang. You want to see the dolphins? See them out here. See them this summer. All right, I'm getting the signal from Captain Stewart that he's frozen. So we're going to continue on our way. We'll take you around Cape May Point here. As we pull away from this pot of dolphins, it's always good luck. Wave goodbye to Flipper, even if it's virtually. I'm waving for you here, folks. Give you another shot of the lighthouse here as we head our back into the bay here. see overly friendly dolphins. You'll have to be more specific. What is an overly friendly dolphin? Folks, if I don't get to your comments while we're underway here, I will be responding to as many as possible after the trip. Coming back through the rips here. Got some cormorants. part of the Cape May Whale Watcher fleet. It's our personal boat. We were out on a whale hunt today. Whale watch, whale search today, folks. I tried to spare you having to be through the two or three hours of searching that we put in. We put in about an hour and a half to two hours before it got a little rough out in the bay there. We had a good report from the Cape May Lewis Ferry. We've been getting reports from the Cape May Lewis Ferry throughout this quarantine period of whale activity in the bay. As many as three humpback whales, we suspect. So we went to our report this morning, and it turned out it was about an hour and a half to two hours old. In an hour and a half to two hours, a whale can move easily 10 miles from where the whale was sighted. We had tons of bait. We had lots of gannets. We had lots of birds. Lots of activity. So 
we saw a lot of the things we want to see except for the whale and for those of you who have been with us before we know it happens right we see whales 98% of the time we see it maybe 68% of the we see whales 68% of the time dolphins 98% of the time so we got the dolphins uh, when this gets posted later on you'll be able to check out the dolphins that we did see down at Cape May Point back around the point now we got the concrete ship coming up right side here this is the wreck of the concrete ship the Atlantis the Atlantis was 210 feet in length commissioned back in June 1919 she was part of an experimental project during World War one to build ships out of concrete instead of steel due to a shortage of steel she made several transatlantic crossings as a cargo ship after being decommissioned, she is being brought here to be used as part of a ferry breakwater system. She ran aground, cracked in half, and she's been there ever since. Once again, constructed entirely of concrete, reinforced with steel rods. Also on your right, that Sunset Beach. Every evening, in season, we have a flag lowering ceremony here at Sunset Beach. A different flag every evening for a different fallen veteran. Sunset Beach is also an excellent spot pick up Cape May Diamonds. Cape May Diamonds are a smallish stone which can be heat treated, polished, and made up into costume jewelry. If you look closely, well, we can't look that closely these days, folks. It's closed. In season, a few people bending over and picking them up. And up ahead on your right, this section of beach, this is known as Higby's Beach. Believe it or not, this used to be our local clothing optional beach. That's right. This was a nude beach for around 85 years. Right up until a little over 25 years ago, Governor Christine Todd Whitman signed a bill to tell everybody, keep your clothes on at Higby's Beach. Today, it's part of the Higby Beach Wildlife Management Area. When it's open, it, it might be, because I'm seeing one or two people at it. It's a great little walk there. This is much how the entire coastline of New Jersey once looked. Hiya, Pat. Thanks for tuning in. Can't wait to see you back at the gift shop. I know Mrs. Stewart has been doing some cleaning at the gift shop and getting ready for the season. We look forward to seeing you along with the rest of the crew very soon.
saw a whale with you guys. Fourth of July week. Second time they saw one. First time for their kids. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. Yep, we were pretty positive we were going to get one this morning there, folks. That's why we announced it. As I mentioned before, it's how it happens sometimes. We've got a couple things working against us. Quarantine not being the least of which. Instead of being out here in 125 feet of boat with four or five folks that absolutely know what they're looking for, along with uh, 50 to 150 of you folks, you may or may not know what you're looking for. It's just me and Captain Stewart today. Coming up on the Cape May Lewis Ferry, that's where we got our whale report from today. Again, they've been having reports throughout the quarantine period here. They've been fortunate enough to be on a regular schedule. So their report this morning, they were, the report was about two miles from where they were, so all they saw was a spout. This is the Cape May Lewis ferry system and the Cape May terminal. Here we have three vessels that dock in all. As you can see, you have three in today, not out in service. It takes approximately 90 minutes to make the 16.5 mile ferry route crossing over to Lewis, Delaware. How's it going, Joe? <laughs> A friend of mine I went to high school with. shipping would not have to go around Cape May Point, where it was being subjected to German U-boat attacks, which were very prevalent in the day. The Cape May Canal is also part of the Intracoastal Waterway. The Intracoastal Waterway is an inland body of water, which runs from Maine down to Florida. It's marked on either side by red and green channel markers. If we were to turn around and take you south on the ICW, we could have you down to Miami Beach in about 1,200 miles. Alright gang, I think that's all we have for now. My phone is dying. I brought a charger to try and charge it for you. It's not working. So I do appreciate everybody coming along for the ride today. We did not get a whale, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. We had some nice dolphins. Uh, if you're just tuning in now, I'm going to post this to the page. That way you can check out the dolphins that we saw down there at Cape May Point feeding in the rips today. We're looking forward to being able to take you out on a traditional whale watch as soon as possible. We're waiting for guidance from the governor of New Jersey and the CDC, health department, local government. We're going to do everything to keep you safe and healthy. 
In the meantime, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll all get through this storm together. I'm Captain Jeff and Captain Stewart, and we look forward to seeing you all again.